Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're going to take a look at a keyboard. <laughs> now first, I'm going to bring you this one. This, I know it's not a GMK series, but it was sold on the Zoya store. This is the Gas 67 by CIY. Um, about two years ago, this was released as a kit um, that was well-priced, gasket-mounted, and with a little modding. It can sound quite nice, but I think this is one of the first of these keyboards that kind of started this trend that Zoya... Uh, the store in AliExpress has definitely picked up and been making some good moves. Some moves I, I can truly appreciate. So first they introduced the GMK67, a lovely 65%, 65 key with a knob, PC plate, gasket mounted, three mode keyboard, pocket for the 2.4, very nice sound stock. And it, when it first came out, uh, I believe it went down as low as forty-five, forty dollars. Uh, yes, bare bone. But a lot of the times, Zoya or the other stores that would resell this keyboard as well uh, would throw in some switches or some key, switches and keycaps for fifteen, twenty dollars more. And there was some deals. And for a little while, it was. Uh, a little bit of an ongoing joke on our budget keeps that we should change it to our GMK67 because for I'd say if several months, especially last year, daily there was multiple posts of hey, I just got my GMK67. A lot of the times it was my first mechanical keyboard or the first customizable mechanical keyboard meaning they may have had uh, a gaming keyboard whether it was a you know razor uh, a logitech you know one of those other brands but you know it had the switches soldered it had the keycaps they had just left it at that and this was their first or this was literally their first you know they don't they only had membranes <laughs> you know prior so it, this not only that it deliver a nice value for the price. I think it also introduced a lot of people to the mechanical keyboard hobby because it lowered the cost of entry significantly um, for something decent. I mean, sure, before that you could have spent around this for you know a bare bone or one with really bad switches and keycaps, and spent a little more, and you would have had eh, you know an okay keyboard. It obviously better than a lot you know, of the stock, just gamer-ish keyboards, because for a while that was, you know, the majority of the market, or that, or the membrane, you know, the wireless desktops, mouse and a, you know, flat keyboard for twenty nine ninety five, and, you know, one little dongle, take it home, all right, you're good to go. But for those people that are discovering, you know, mechanical keyboards, because I'm old enough to remember when... <laughs> You know, mechanical keyboards, buckling springs, you know, cherry switches back in the day. I mean, I didn't know. I know. I knew that cherry made the switches. Um, and I know that I had some, but I, it was never, you know, because I never took off the keycaps unless, you know, it fell off or something. I put them back on. Um, I never thought about changing out switches. I was too busy working. And I just, you know, keyboards were, they were just, just a tool. Um, now, granted, the keyboards that I had, I stuck with. I mean, I, I had the uh, Microsoft Ergonomic keyboard for quite some time, and anytime you know it broke or you know it was time to just get a new one. Because I mean, I actually there was the first keyboard I remember getting that I actually cleaned. Um, granted, that was back when I smoked cigarettes, so there was definitely a lot of ashes that were making it dirty but anyway so we got the gmk67 it was a great i mean it's a great keyboard still it's not was it is a great keyboard that delivers a great experience for the price and um, comes in numerous colors and i i haven't heard anyone complain about it uh the several ones i have 
purchased maybe eight, maybe nine. I've done a couple, maybe three. Uh, yeah, I've done three um, commission builds and I gave a couple away and I haven't heard any complaints. I know I use mine um, quite regularly and my wife, I finally was able to get her to use one because she was using a 60% for a while and she didn't she didn't get the how to use the arrows and that's what got to her and she's like wow god so she's using one of these now and she's very happy to have the arrows back and she didn't realize that she wanted a knob until she got the knob so <laughs> so after the gmk 67 and it was a good time after um i don't want to guess how long i can't remember it a good little while after the GMK 67 came out and started, you know, not started, it was, you know, it had a good ground. It was, it was selling a lot. It came to Amazon uh, through some resellers like Boy. Then came the GMK 87. Now, this one started out at like 50. I think it goes as low as 30. I think I've seen it as low as 28. I bought one for 30. Um, it has a... a TFT LCD display as well as a knob uh, with a metal badge up here. It is a three mode as well with a pocket for the TKL. Um, it, it is a very nice TKL that again has a low barrier to entry and stock. I've done no mods to this. Spend a little time tuning it it's going to sound so much better again i mean one can on aliexpress you know get a set of switches get a set of caps um, and probably build this for 55 60 bucks and you're going to have what yes it's it's no tiger light but it is a really good tkl especially considering the price it's got flex it's got via Starting with this one, they, they started using Viat. Now, to be clear, the Viat they're using is does not appear from everything I can see to be based on QMK. From what I can gather, they appear to have like captured the protocol and how Viat communicates to the Viat client, and they've replicated it so that you know when Viat sends a signal, it sends the expecting signal back. Most everything works. You have the layers, you can map keys to the RGB controls. Now there's one thing, especially with these, may not count for all of them. I mean, be, there are two types of VIA. The VIA that's original VIA, that is a QMK key map. That means that VIA, there's a QMK source for it somewhere most likely in the QMK firmware tree, although there's a couple of companies that keep their own GitHub repositories or GitLab source control repositories with their QMK source. And under the key maps file, you'll have a VIA file. And that will be, that basically adds a layer of, of, of VIA communication. One of the things that that true VIA can do is send QMK codes, codes directly into the firmware that tell QMK to do specific things. Then there's the, I want to, I don't want to call it VIA Lite because it's not made by VIA. It's uh, the VIA clone. You know, it, it, it's the VIA wannabe. Now that VIA is on this keyboards and does seem to be coming on some, not all, like Monsky keyboards. Uh, Akko keyboards, they have QMK source, uh, HH, HHFD, I believe is a company, and the designer, I can't remember his name at the moment, but he actually writes the QMK code and creates the VIA source map file, so there's some companies that do do it, but, I mean, obviously they're trying to save money, though, I, I think that if they just got a better MCU, I'm sure, I know I wouldn't mind paying a little bit more if this was QMK VIA, but that via that they're building basically it's limited some of the codes that they have just won't do anything because there is no qmk there in the firmware it's either their own implementation or it's a layer that's q 
communicating with their already closed source firmware that they make, whatever is going on. So you have to go into certain sections, you have to go and go to the any key. And when you select it, like select a key to map, go to custom, I believe, or special, and then you select the any key, then there's a drop down. And even though like there's a brightness on the on the lightning control in the column on Via, but that won't work with this one for the brightness of the key LEDs. But if you select a key that you want to be bright, you know, plus, bright, less, you go to that any map it to that any key, and when the window pops up with a drop down, you got to search all the way down, and then there'll be a brightness plus, brightness minus, RGB underscore VAI, RGB underscore VAD ones for up ones for down and you can map it to those so what you have in those drop downs usually in that window you can type in uh you can literally create kind of like a macro a combination of keys you can tell qmk to do a lot of things through qmk codes and methods but in these clone or not real vias you can't do that macros still work most of these have um four layers, zero through three, uh, and you can do the, the mappings for, you know, uh, for practically any key. Um, so you're going to have a good amount of the functionality. If you've never used QMK codes, it's most likely not going to affect you. Now that said, I have had more questions since this keyboard came out about using via uh than any any other time any other keyboard that to date and when it comes to either reddit or through here on my youtube channel um so so yes this is a nice tkl that sounds good um doesn't take i mean you can mod it and i'm going to be coming back to mod it i actually got a brand new gmk 87 in black and we're going to do some different modifications to each and then see if we can make one really like Mahjong tile kind and the other one maybe thought like so anyway this is the uh so this was the second one i believe this is the order they came out in because i saw this one before i started seeing the other ones like the gmk 81 so this one i saw i want to say i noticed it about three weeks after uh i had noticed the gmk 87 i already had that one on the way actually it arrived couple days after I first saw this one so this one as we can see is a 75% and it's only got a screen um, again this is a three mode yeah the cases are very similar um, to the GMK 7 uh, the GMK 67 has a different case and I do have a video on how to open that easily um, it seems it appears to be harder than it really is once you know the trick it's easy to get in there. So again, we have the uh, USB, we have a pocket for the uh, dongle, and we have the, the switch modes on here, though we do not have the uh, Windows Mac mode that's done through a key combination. I wanna say it's A and S, but I don't recall at this moment. But so then they came out with this keyboard. Again, another nice keyboard is 75%, uh, two flip out feet for three typing angles, uh, PET plate, uh, foam on the bottom, I think it's a 3,000 milliamp hour battery as, as with the others. Um, super nice stock sound test because of that PET film. I think that makes a lot, a big difference. But really a, um, a nice keyboard. With these that have the screen, they use a separate executable to upload animations and pictures to the screen. You don't use Maya to do it. Uh, Maya doesn't have that functionality. Um, regardless so uh, usually that's how it's done through a third party now would I love to see that integrated yes please one of these days I hope I think vial is working towards that but don't quote me on that vial is another um, firmware so again a lovely keyboard that sounds nice stock GMK 81 same thing in the 30 to 50 dollar range depending on what you can catch them on and uh, it's got space for two animations and it also keeps that dis it, you have three screens you can scroll through on any of these that have the screens with function enter 
it'll go through the information screen, which will show you the mode, battery levels, you know, how you're connected, uh, it, 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 time, all of that stuff. Now the time to set the time, you will have to connect it to a Windows PC, have the customizing software, which as far as I can see so far, it seems to be the same customizing software uh, that for all, all of them. So you just open that up, you plug it in, and it will set the time based on the computer that it's plugged into, and it will keep that time as long as the battery's got a charge. So, but after this one, then they came out with another one. Zoya went and did a complete 360 and came right back to the beginning with another 65%. Well, but this one appears to be more in the style of the ones that we just looked at, the GMK81, the GMK87. It's not like the GMK67 with the split case. Uh, so today, we are gonna be taking a look at the GMK67-S. And yes, I believe S stands for screen. Now in the box, we have a manual that comes in a couple of languages so that we can see how to use it, uh, what the modifier keys are, uh, function, and how to change the uh, colors, so on and so forth. Keep this handy. It does come in. It helps. For accessories, we ha have a actually really nice uh, braided USB cable. It's one of the slightly longer ones. I want to say it's six foot. Um, USB-A to USB-C with gold contacts. It feels nice. They're durable, and I've been using them. I, I like these. These are probably my second favorite that I like to use. Then we also have a wire switch and keycap puller. And here it is, the Zoya GMK67-S. Now, as we can see, the S is for the screen. And this is actually more like a TV or, you know, back in the day when I saw, you know, new TVs with the uh, 4 by 3 aspect ratio, you know, closer to a square. But... I like to uh, put protective screen on that before I turn it on. But anyway, today I'm just going to do a quick build out of it. Now, it does seem to have a bag. Oh, that's actually aluminum. That's an aluminum badge. Oh, and that's where the 2.4 is stored. And it seems to be on a spring. Well, that's actually, um, I mean, stylistically, it's not bad. Now, granted, I mean, that could slip off, but it's yeah, it's on there pretty good. It's not loose. Oh. Oh, it's held on there by a magnet. That's that's nice. All right, so that's that shouldn't fall out easy. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's well attached in there. And in the back, we've also got our USB, our Windows or Mac mode switch, as well as our connection switch. And as with the new ones, and I've made a couple of videos about this as you can see they have a PET layer on here now I've been all of the ones I've been getting have at least one hole punched out I don't know if they're doing that just to kind of like get you started I wish they would put a note in the box um, there's been a lot of people that have had uh, troubles uh, they've also um, bent a lot of pins um, I have not heard but one story that I was involved in that I talked to the person that they actually popped out a socket. Um, so that is one thing. Most of the time when PET mods are used, they are already cut out not only for the um, switches but the pins. Now, the IXPE layer that is above it now does have to, it does seem to have slots for where the holes are supposed to be so that shouldn't be an issue but one of the things that i do recommend with these is to go ahead and please use something plastic there is a battery right about there so you don't want to be using something metal but something plastic that'll go through you know it doesn't have to have too much of a point but to go through and go ahead and make those holes because the uh, center pole of switches the center post of switches does not have um, a sharp tip uh, you're just a dulled bottom instead of actually puncturing through the, the PET plastic and it's pretty thin 
a layer of, uh, I'm going to say it's about one or two mils, but I don't know and I don't have a way to measure it really. But um, it, it pulls on it, so it drags it and it bunches it up and it can make for a crunchy sound. So uh, I can see where this will be a lot of trouble for some people, especially if they did not know about this. So please, you know, if when you get the keyboard and it does not have those holes punched out, please punch them out before installing switches. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. All right, so I've gone ahead and punched out all the holes, so we shouldn't have any issues with switches, but we can go ahead and try and grab a 510 switch. I mean, if you don't have 5-pin switches, it won't be a trouble, but if you do, but you're still gonna be using 3-pin switches, I just recommend for the first go, just either loading up an entire set of 5-pins or just using a 5-pin switch to push it down and into the uh, holes to make sure that you can uh, do this. Now, having a plastic spudger or something that you can use to lift up on the plate is going to make the biggest difference um, to getting these in properly and actually actuating. Because you can actually get it in, but it's halfway on the plate, so it's not actually all the way in and making the contact below. And it might if you press on it really hard. So. Uh, although I'm going to open it real quick here, I am going to load up the switches uh, without it open because I know for some people it might seem a little daunting and I want to just show how you can do it without opening it and still being careful enough to, to get all of them in there. But to open this up, it is, oh, this is different. It is definitely a different design. All right, so it All right, so it's not the easiest thing, but the way that I did it was you can see the inside of the clips under here, and I basically pressed on one, held it out a little bit, then to where I could at least get my spudger in there. Now I can go ahead and start undoing the rest of the clips. But they're on there pretty tight and you don't want to pull off the keyboard top until you have disengaged all the clips or you could actually end up breaking one all right so get under here right. you want to just gently go and push the clips naturally off still engaged over on this side one more there we go all right and that's how the top come off this one is a little bit trickier because oh, come on I hope I don't damage it before I get to put the screen protector on it we can see the little magnets in the pocket for the 2.4 receiver but we can see that we have your standard um, uh, foam gaskets and on the plate, on the PC plate. And I'm not going to pull too hard because we're going to have right there, this going to be the cable for the daughter board. And there is going to be the connector for the battery, which again, in this one is another 3000 lamp hour battery. So... A lot of the stuff they're using is very similar across the board, like with the screens, although this one is a square one. They put it in basically in a one use space. And I gotta say, I kinda like it. Um, so far, I'm expecting this to be um, a good sounding keyboard because they all have been stock. Uh, so anyway, one thing, if you, this is one of your first mechanical keyboards that you're building um, from a kit. Uh, you don't have experience with doing switches in hot shop sockets. Then at that point, I would honestly um, suggest that you go and carefully disconnect both of these cables and install your first time 
not every time you install switches, but the first time that you go to install switches, that you do it that way. So not only you can support the back of the PCP, but you can also, you know, see, because you're going to be able to put it up to an eye angle without the case getting in the way, and see the angle at which the switches are in to see, because they have to be flat. The top housing basically has to be flat all the way around on the plate. If not, it's not properly in. So that means it's not probably not going to get a proper connection. So, but today I'm going to go ahead and show how to do it without having to open it up in case you don't want to, um, you know, take a chance. I know people are afraid of uh, breaking clips. If it's done properly, you should be able to open it and close it hundreds of times without breaking it. Uh, screws into plastic is what bothers me because after a few times of unscrewing and screwing, basically the metal screw wears away at the plastic post and, and no longer has any thread, nothing to grab onto. So in my opinion, I prefer clips. I know sometimes they can be hard to get into, but the harder to get into, that means the more sturdier they are as far as not, you know, breaking open and, um, you know, just falling apart. They're, they're well adjusted and not that I, you know, would recommend opening it so hard that you break a clip, but if it's one at the top or the bottom, it usually won't make that much of a difference, especially if it has three or four on the top and the bottom. Um, but as long as you don't try to pull it off while it's still engaged, as long as you've disengaged all the, the clips, you should be able to remove it. I mean, it will remove without breaking anything. It's when you manhandle it that the clips can break but that's just a little tip from your uncle mark we're going to go ahead and press down on it so we can engage the clips again come on, come on. you gotta get on there there we go a little misaligned uh, i love the sound of that snap So we already got in here. All right, so this is a spudger. Different kind of spudgers. There's pick spudgers. This is a stick spudger. I've, I've heard it called different things, but it has a nice sharp tip in one end. And I mean, really sharp. When it, they're brand new, it'll draw blood if you punch puncture your finger with it it's almost as sharp as a needle and in the back end we've got a nice little hook to pull you know pull wires through if we're trying to but this this plastic flat end it, it is so handy especially when working with mechanical keyboards but making 3d printed models uh, working with small craft stuff uh, these spudgers are great and you can get like a pack for 100 for like 20 bucks so um and they for the most part last forever so I highly recommend getting one or a few if uh, you intend to be working on keyboards because they do come in handy. Anyway, so today for switches, uh, we're going to go with a set of bubble gum switches that come in two different colors. Now, these are available from KP Republic. Uh, they did send them to me at a discount. Uh, with KP Republic, they most of the time they just send me stuff that if i request because i saw these and i was like oh i gotta give these a shot and so they give me a significant discount on purchasing them in exchange for the review but i have money in on the game on these so they are palm linear um bubble gum switches they do come in two different colors and they come in packs like this which i believe it's um was it 30 times two no it's like yeah, it's like 15 of each. I, I can't even remember now. It's been a minute since I, I ordered these, so, and I haven't used them, but let's see real quick. Well, they each come in their own container, and they're basically, it looks like, reverses of each other. Yeah, so it's 15 of each. So 15 of each, so 30 in a box. So these are... Like I said, I haven't even had a chance to play it, so. I hope they don't lean lube in. But one of the nice things is, I mean, don't get me wrong. I prefer a lube switch over an unlube switch in a day. I am not a fan of pink. But 
with these keyboards, we're not dealing with anything plastic. I mean, unless you go and make yourself an aluminum plate uh, or a steel plate, we're dealing with plastic. There's nothing to really, I mean, the plastic can rever reverberate, um, but it's not going to transmit the sound of a, spring, a pingy spring. All right. We don't have any paint on these, but again, let me read the specs. They are bubblegum linear stem made out of palm. The top is modified palm. The bottom is nylon palm. The spring is 22 millimeters. It has an actuation force of 37 grams, a bottom out force of 45 grams, plus or minus five. Pre-travel of 1.8 millimeters, plus or minus four tenths of a millimeter and total travel three and a half millimeters plus or minus three tenths of a millimeter so interesting specs i gotta say they they definitely are light and they have a nice it's actually a deeper it's not so much clacky but it's definitely poppy um i gotta say i like these there are five pins so it's going to be perfect for these I am going to, this box, I accidentally stepped on it, but thankfully it didn't seem to damage the switches on the inside. I am a bit of a, a weird aesthetics nerd, um, so usually I would be like, oh, you can't put, them. like, I would actually pick out the colors specifically uh, so that I only have one color, but I'm going to, I'm going to just go crazy here. It's under the keys anyway, so <laughs> just have fun with it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and load up these switches, but like I said, I'm going to do it in a way that's going to help, or at least I hope it's going to help those of you that want to go ahead and start installing these switches and not having to take it apart. Though, like I said, if you have a little bit of uh, little experience to none, I would highly recommend doing it that way. Um, not only are you going to diminish your possibilities of damaging the PCB, but I think it's going to be easier to get all the switches in, and you probably will learn a little bit in the process. So, But again, you do what you feel you're comfortable with. So what I like to do when I'm doing these flexi boards, because they've definitely gotten flexi. Don't get me wrong, I like PC. I think PC lends itself to be in a deeper tone. But when it's too flexi, what will happen is that we'll have the switch that will go in, but it won't lock in to the plate all the way. Now here you can see a switch that is properly locked in all the way around because the top housing is sitting on the plate and yeah, that feels nice and solid. So I still have one more clip I disengaged and I'll go ahead and test them out on a keyboard tester once we've done through because that's, I mean, as careful as you might be, you might bend a pen, or, a pen or two on switches, thankfully. As long as you're careful, you can bend them back into place and you know, put them back in. Um, so, and even though hot shop sockets are really should be held with a little bit more than just solder, because solder should just be for the connection, um, I think they have gotten better over the, uh, the last year or so. Um, I have not seen as many incidences of hot swap sockets popping off. So, not saying that it can't happen, because it can definitely happen. But again, we're gonna lift up on the plate a little bit, basically use a little leverage here, so that we wanna first kind of position the switch, and then when we think we're in the right spot, we wanna push down nice and firm, but not too hard. If you push down too hard, who knows what could happen. So you want to make sure, of course, before going in that your pins are perpendicular to the base of the switch. That way you're ensured that they're not going to already be trouble and not even line up. Again, lift up on the plate. You want to make sure that the center post is in there so it should be in the right place. Nice, firm push down. Obviously the plate's going to give a little bit, but as long as it locks into the plate, as you can see, we can only see the top of the top housing legs, but the top or the bottom of the top housing is firmly flat on top of the plate. 
you just don't want to stay there for nothing. All right, since I, I can't do, I'm going to go ahead and just make me a, a protector real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I got my cutout. I don't believe it is perfect, but I think it will do for now. Yep, I knew it was a little too big. Uh, I was trying to <coughs> make sure I had enough space, and I think I overcorrected. But that's going to stay on there for now. And I do that because it's a plastic cover over the screen, and they usually... They scratch quite easily, even with just a little dust on it. So um, using old phone screen protectors is what I do to protect these. Anyway, so I'm going to load up a couple more here, and then I'll just load all of them up. Uh, usually the ones by the stabilizers might give you a little bit of a, a problem because there's not as much to grab onto to really you know, lever it up. But... Oh. I don't think I have that one lined up just right. All right. All right. Yeah, we're in. Here we got another one. Make sure that we line it up. All right. And then we want to lever the plate up. And press down. Nice and firm. Again, just check, there's no gaps. You are on the plate, you're all good. Oh, did I just say that? I keep aging myself sometimes. <laughs> all right, we're good. That went in. Now, once we got a few random ones, what I like to do is start with the corners and then kind of just fill in the, param the perimeter and then fill it in from there so do another corner like this one on the side going to be a little tricky but we could probably come at it from this way let's uh, line it up firm press yep we are in there again for the stabilizer i going to want to uh, we could actually come from right here yeah going to want to line it up make sure it's in there firm press and we are in. All right, so I guess I'm trying to do variations, but once you start to get more of the perimeter ones in, it's going to be a little easier as you go. But you might have sometimes just a little bit of issue with just one or two, and you'll have to give it a little bit of prep from the or leverage, leverage from either the front or the back. Or sometimes the sides will work as well. Oh, so much for my skipping one of each color. All right, so we've got the uh, bubblegum switches. That's, I mean, I guess they are bubblegum. Zuka, su, su, zo, se, so, su, suki, zucky. I really don't know how to pronounce it, but I think there'll be a little foggy in here. So you noticed if you watched, I mean, I know I sped, I'm going to be speeding it up, but as long as you're leveraging the plate up and you make sure that all the switches are the top housing is completely flush with the plate, then we should be good. Now you'll obviously want to go through a keyboard tester to make sure that they're all inserted, but before we put any keycaps on here, let's go ahead and take a look at what the light and the screen looks like. Oh, there's also this. Um, I do believe that that is just a protective layer. Yeah, it is. All right, so, I mean, you can leave it on there if you want, but that does feel like a bit of aluminum, just like we have over here. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we've got. Bam! 
I, at first, I, I wasn't sure about mixing and matching the colors of the switches, but I gotta say, I, I like that. Um, the time is off, but the time gets set when it gets plugged into the custom software, which I will get to here in a little bit. But we need to go ahead and load up some keycaps. Um, I'm gonna go through real quick beforehand and just make sure that all of the keys work. So it looks like I found one where thankfully, usually when this happens, m more more often than not, it, it uh, basically just got bent against the uh, PCB and not the hot swap socket. So we can take some tweezers and we can straighten out the pin. We wanna get this as straight as possible to be as perpendicular with the base as possible. And sometimes some of these pins are a little bit softer or harder than others. So you just have to figure out the right amount of force because we don't want to bend it off. And some of these pins sometimes are actually like an onion. They're double layered and they can actually split apart. So this is obviously crooked that way. So we want to straighten it out a little that way. I'm just gonna be real gentle with these pliers so that we can get this. And pliers will usually help flatten it out if it's gonna curve to it. And then like I said, you wanna make sure that it's perpendicular, parallel to the other pin and perpendicular to the base. should be good a little bit more and then kind of want to come in from the back make sure those pins are getting into the socket and we're good oh looks like we got another one yep we got a bent pin all right so no matter how many times I've done this, it still happens to me. But it used to be like, <laughs> I swear, like probably half of the pins would be bent. But now I've gotten to where it's only a couple. So, and I mean, I've built quite a few keyboards. So don't feel bad if it happens to you, whether it's your first time or your 12th time. Uh, these can be a little bit tricky. We're dealing with some really weak little pins and they have to get just in the right spot. So I like to come in from the back a little bit, but then I want to make sure that that center post is in. And then, awesome. All right, that works, it's just Windows key. All right, function works. All right, so only two. So we only had two switches that had bent pins, but they're all working now caps lock is on because I pressed it and we are in wired mode and today is not February 9th so we're gonna have to fix that here in a little bit but let's load up the keycaps first so today we're gonna go with these JTK 404 now this is a keycap set that I purchased from the key company TKC uh, they did give me a little bit of a discount um, because I said I'd be reviewing them uh, I've worked with them many times in the past uh they're just a great group of people over there and they're actually right down the street from where i live um i actually planned and going to try to do it this year we were going to do it last summer but then stuff just happened and before we knew it winter was here um, i'm going to pay a visit to tkc one of these days um, i just have to get one of my kids to be my videographer so that i can walk around and actually talk to the staff and everything and and check everything out but i do hope to do that this year and if i do i'll announce it on my channel first so if you, anyone has questions for the tkc let me know and i will do my best to to cover them but we got this jtk 404 and i think it's just the base kit plus some extras i do know they had another extra but i don't think it was in stock i've never tried jtk personally uh they're double shot abs they do come in these really nice locking cases these are probably the besides the ACO, these are probably the nicest ones and they might have the ACO. Uh, what are the memory cases memorial cases collector's case the collector's case now they're nice but 
they're all stuck to pegs and if you break one of those pegs and the key is just gonna be floating around in the case it's metal this being able to see it you know access it like this it's in my opinion really nice really well done um, I've got to believe for the price of a lot of keycap sets nowadays that adding you know a plastic tray wouldn't add that much to the cost in manufacturing but would make a huge difference if all my keycaps were in trays like this it'd be so much easier to organize i mean i have them in a combination of the boxes they came in as well as um kitco jars and it's just there's no simple way to you know because sometimes keycap set is just like a 65 percent or an 80 percent sometimes they have you know kidding for everything and they come in like four trays and big old boxes and it's like there's no standard but if they all use something like this as a standard boy oh boy i i think that i would not be the only one that would be happy so i'm going to do a separate review of these keycaps later on but i wanted to go ahead and use them because they've been just sitting here just talking to me telling me hey put me on a keyboard and i thought hey why not we'll do a dark with a dark and a light so we'll see what it looks like so let's go ahead and load up these um keycaps but they are double shot abs made by jtk um and i do believe they're 1.5 millimeter width let's see yep 1.5 millimeters of body thickness so they are a very nice cap they do have those um those lines that you'll see like with the GMK cap, but I've heard nothing but good things about these keycaps. So I'm hoping that it's going to make for uh, kind of a deeper sound with this stock build. Obviously I'll be coming back to GMK 67 as well as the other GMKs. I've got another GMK 87. Uh, some people are reporting issues with the GMK 87 and I want to go through. I have two of them. I have tested them. They both work, but I want to go through and see if I can rep replicate any of these issues and if I can find any fixes. Um, I still think the Zoya's GMK series are a good buy. Um, the VIA implementation is not a true VIA implementation because it's based, it's not based off of a QMK key map. So some of the functionality isn't quite there, but it's not your everyday use case. It's more of edge case use scenarios. So, but I'd still prefer that instead of creating this fake VIA, that they would actually just spend the dollar, two dollars more and get the proper MCU that's QMK compatible and provide us with an actual QMK VIA. So Zoya, if you guys are listening, please spend the extra money. We'll, we'll pay it. We'll pay the difference so that we can have true QMK VIA. And these are not only just people like me that use Linux and Mac. This is everybody. There's a single interface for your keyboards, and we want to use that. QMK and VIA takes care of that. So you need a, a separate EXE for the images, that's fine. VIA, or QMK, I believe, is working on adding that functionality. But in the meantime, use the MCUs that allow you to do QMK and give us true QMK VIA, because this is not true VIA. So let me go ahead and load up these keycaps on the GMK67S and we'll go ahead and get to the software so we can update the screen and go ahead and do a sound test. And here we are with the GMK 67S with the JTK 404 and the Zusuk bubblegum switches. Uh, again, I don't know, but they this combination sounds really nice. I gotta say, I really enjoy how these GMK boards come out just sounding so good right out of the box. And that's just... Some of these keys they're pretty tight so i have to actually make sure they're down pressed well but i mean look at that flex if you like flex this board has got it for you now that we've gone ahead and built it let's go take a quick look at the software all right so i got it put together um 
The file, which I will link down below, includes a PDF of the instruction manual. It has an, a firmware update, which I tried using VIA beforehand and it did connect and I was able to use the JSON file, but it was showing these long key codes for the keys. Once I did the firmware update, it worked. And one thing, I just I only tried a couple of QMK codes, but I tried some codes that were not in the dropdown list for any, and it allowed them to go through and they worked. So I still have to do some more testing to see um, about that. Now, after I did the firmware, I went ahead and uh, connected up the custom, custom tool. It uninstalled my GMK87 one, but this seems to be a newer version, um, and it works with both the GMK87, the 81, and this one. Um, so it uninstalls your previous version, but even though it's an update, it still says pick true instead of picture, and not in just one spot, in a couple of spots. It says pick true. I mean, I, I, I know what it means. It's picture, but uh, loading up the animation, it does the same thing as it did before, though leaving it alone for one. I actually ended up accidentally loading um, Owen oh, for just for reference to switch the screens on this one. You want to do uh, function shift, uh, right shift. Now I accidentally loaded up on the two screens the same animation. That's why you see that, but it did connect and. It, the one thing though with the time, it did not update correctly. So not only, I mean, before it was a couple days off, now it's in December of 2004. So I don't know what that's about. There's another issue that people have been reporting with both the GMK87 and with, um, I don't know if it was this one, but I just experienced it myself. I was using it and all of a sudden, the uh, function keys, like if I hit function F1, it was like Mac. Even though I checked, I'm like, no, I'm in Windows mode. And, um, you know, Alt was acting as the Windows key. I don't know what this issue is, but the way that I have found to fix it is just to put it into Mac mode, put it back into Windows mode, and then you're going to have the keys working as you'd expect them to. So uh, after connecting it, like I said, I was able to open it up in VIA. All the key controls were there. Um, I'm not necessarily too thrilled about this mapping, and I'm going to remap it um, and figure out where I'm going to put delete and insert. But um, it was an immediate connection with a 2.4, uh, so that's good. Not being able to update the time, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, now, this keyboard sounds great, and the fact that it has at least, you know, partially working via, maybe a little bit better working via now, perhaps they did something to handle the um, the QMK codes. Now, I only tried a couple of different combinations, but when I mapped them, they worked. Um, so I still have to go in there and um, mess with the different layers and make sure that I can actually um, map all sorts of QMK codes. I'm basically going to put it through its paces. I will come back and do another video on it. Um, but again, uh, now this one, this one was sent over to me by Boy. Boy resells them on Amazon in the U.S. Now there is a markup on it, but if you have any issues with it when you receive it. Amazon returns, as we know, is a lot easier to deal with than AliExpress returns. Um, it For me, it's been hit or miss with the Zoya store. Cute's Living, if I have, I mean, I've even just e-messaged message them through AliExpress asking for the files. Because I bought, hey, I bought this from you guys. Can I get the, the driver files? Nothing. No response. Nothing. Complete silence. So I could only imagine that if there was a dispute process. So, I don't know. I just know that if you want to be sure, buying through Amazon, you're definitely going to be paying for a markup. But that markup comes with the fact that you, you know, have the 30 days to return it. And sometimes you even, you know, will get extended if there is an issue, warranty, so on. Um, so, Boye has always been extremely responsive. Um, I 
and asked him about this. Now, he did ship this directly from China. I think he's still get, trying to get stock into Amazon, but it should be there now, and it should be in Prime soon enough. He's carrying a lot of these, and he does respond to customer uh, support emails. And he, from the few people that I know that have purchased from him as well, they've, they've got nothing but, but praise. These keyboards, they sound great. The software, still going through some, some growing pains, but I do believe that it's getting better, it's improving. I mean, like I said, via codes that I know I tried on a previous version and that still don't work on my other ones, the GMK67, well, sorry, not GMK67 is not via. The GMK87, the GMK81, there's still codes I cannot send through. Um, I can only use the ones that are in the drop down. Now, this is in the special section. If you select any key, if you try to map your key to any key, you get a window pop up that allows you to send in normal situations when a, you're dealing with a VIA key map file, it will send those QMK codes directly to um, the underlying QMK firmware. But in those two keyboards, that didn't work. After I did the firmware on this, I tried, I think, two or three QMK codes I know didn't don't work on the other ones and they did work here so I'm gonna go and set up layer two and three and play with some you know more advanced configurations and see what I can get out of that but anyway um I've got to say I know some people are like oh, I'm just I don't, I don't know about soya I still haven't gotten a bad one Every single one that I've gotten has worked. Like I said, they're very flexi plates, so there is a bit of a um, there, there there is a bit of a installation issue. And I do wish that those center post holes came punched out. Many people, uh, or include a note, include a note with a little plastic tool. Please punch out the holes. Which, I mean. At that point, you're acknowledging it, so it's like, why aren't you doing this for me in the first place? They're obviously saving some money by not getting them punched out. So, I mean, because I noticed the IXP sheet isn't even punched out. So, I would like to see at least something done, if nothing else, putting a note in the box for the folks that haven't watched the video that I made or any others that may have covered that, hey, they had, there's a plastic layer above the PCB. I've read so many times where people were like, oh, I guess they, you know, they wrap the PCB in plastic and they take it apart just to remove the PET and then put it back together. Um, so I think it's a lot of work. But when you leave the PET film in, I personally, I like it. I like the poppiness. I like what it adds to the tone of the keyboard and... It really, it really brings it to life. And for what you're paying, I mean, no keyboards under $200 sounded like this a year, year and a half ago. Um, stock. I mean, you could do tons of mod. You might get close to this, but there wasn't keyboards that sounded this good for, you know, as inexpensive as these are. So you have to kind of try to balance all of it. I hope that Zoya continues to improve um, I'd like to see a new GMK67 with VIA I know that it's possible because they've done it on their other ones and the EK68 has it which is the same physical keyboard it's just rebranded by the company that shall not be named I also loaded up the bubblegum the Zook bubblegum switches that come in two different colors basically inverted versions of each other uh, these were sent over to me by KP Republic with a discount and didn't send them for free. I, I received a discount when I purchased these and um, just like I do with some other keycaps so that when I feature them in other videos, I'm going to be a, doing a separate review of these in the near future. The JTK404 keycaps not found. Uh, these were purchased from the key company, TKC, uh, with a small discount in exchange for featuring them and we're talking about them. Uh, I, I think they're really nice keycaps. Um, and the price, I do know they were on sale and they threw in an extra discount for me. So um, I don't remember exactly how much, but these are a nice keycap set. And I really, really love the keycap tray. I just wish more manufacturers would sell keycaps like that. Come on, I'll, I'll gladly, I will pay $5 more for keycap set if they all came in those boxes and standardize. 
I'm going to go ahead and leave you with the sound test of the Zoya GMK67S. Um, I do hope that you enjoy it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. I do my best to answer all questions. Um, let's get a conversation going. Uh, also, um, I'm very active on the subreddit, Budget Keebs, where we discuss a lot, a lot share a lot of builds. Um, we have a weekly question thread that we do our best to answer all the questions in there. We also have a Discord server, discord.budgetkeebs.com, where we also have a question channel. Um, sales are shared there. Like If you're looking to get one of these from AliExpress as cheap as possible, jump on the Discord server and you will see links. There are links shared when a super deal, when a you know 30-minute sale comes, that you will... You will see, especially if you subscribe to the channel or just hover in there and hang out. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you have anything that you'd like me to take a look at when I come back, please do let me know and I'll do my best to get to it. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.